A major snowstorm and severe weather are headed for portions of the Midwest and Ohio Valley. I have your updated New Year's Eve forecast. And January looks very cold for the East. Could this be a repeat of December? It's December 27th, 2025. Let's get into the weather updates. Okay, we have a lot to talk about today. First off, major snowstorm, potentially blizzard-like conditions for portions of Iowa, Minnesota, Wisconsin. That's going to be tomorrow into Monday. Severe weather across portions of the Ohio Valley. Tons of cold air out east for New Year's Eve. We get the opportunity for some more mid-Atlantic and New England coastal snow. You move forward here and you see potentially a little bit of snow in the south. There's a ton going on here. This is a very active start to January. But as always, to start off, I like to take a look at our live radar. We've got some snowstorms moving through the northwest right now. Idaho, Montana, Oregon. Nothing too major, although we could have some serious snow squalls through portions of Montana, so I'd watch out for that. Down here in the desert southwest, a little bit of rain. You can see a little bit of snow moving into Utah. Utah as well. Nothing major out west. We've obviously been dealing with a ton of moisture slamming into the California coast. You guys are going to dry up for a little bit here, but it does look like as we get into the middle of this upcoming week, we may have a lot of precipitation moving back in to the desert southwest, moving back into California. And then notice a winter storm watch for portions of the upper Midwest. Blizzard-like conditions are going to be possible for some of us up here within the next 24 to 48 hours. I would say especially this region right here where we could have some very, very gusty winds, potentially gusting over 50 miles per hour. Here's a note from the Twin Cities National Weather Service. Potential winter storm to bring accumulating snow and possible blizzard conditions to central and southern Minnesota into western Wisconsin Sunday through Sunday night. Strong winds and low visibility are expected over western through far southern Minnesota where blizzard conditions are possible. Snow likely possibly heavy at times. Total snow accumulations between 5 to 8 inches. Right now the models see 10 plus inches. It is possible I think still to get a foot somewhere around the Minneapolis metro, but we'll see as this develops. This is definitely a more safe bet, 5 to 8 inches. Again, I wouldn't be surprised, 9, 10 plus if that happens. A light glazing of ice is possible. This is going to be on the front end. We could start with a little bit of freezing rain, but then it's going to turn into snow and it's going to be maybe 14 hours of straight snowfall. Winds could gust over 40 miles per hour. Again, I think we could get 50 plus mile per hour gusts. Let's take a look at the next 7 to 10 days here. This is the latest GFS. It's still loading in, so I'm going to have to go back to the 06 e once I get out a few days. But here we go. Obviously, we're warm across the central plains and moving out east right now. We're going to start to see this low deepen and this trough begin to tilt over the northern Rockies and northern plains. And that's when the instability is going to build up through this region. We could see severe weather in here and we're going to get a lot of moisture for snow on the north side of the system. You can see getting into Sunday morning, that snow begins to move in to portions of north and south Dakota, Nebraska, western Iowa, and Minnesota. We move throughout the day Sunday. The slow continues to deepen and we're potentially seeing two inch an hour snow for some of us out here. This is heavy snow, low visibility, strong winds. Again, blizzard-like conditions are possible, and we're going to have to watch what's happening down here in the Ohio Valley because severe weather is definitely possible, like I said, for some of us in this region. This is the national blend, so this is a conservative model. I do think a lot of these areas will see more snow than this, but we can see Minneapolis Metro, six to eight inches is possible. Central to northern Wisconsin, we're talking six inches to a foot in this region. The farther north you go, you could receive a little bit more snow. It's giving Milwaukee a chance for a couple of inches, maybe a dusting down there into Chicago. I do think that's mostly going to be rain, sleet, wintery mix. The European model's being pretty aggressive as well. Eight to 10 inches possible through the Minneapolis Metro. We're seeing potentially three to five inches through portions of Northern and Northeastern Iowa, two to five down here in Southern Wisconsin. And then we're talking six inches to a foot, like I said, as we move North in Wisconsin. I don't want to forget you guys out here in the UP of Michigan. I mean, I think these models speak for themselves. It's going to be a lot of snow. And then out here in Western Michigan, five to eight inches is definitely on the table for you guys. We moved through Sunday into Monday. We still have this severe threat lingering it's moving a little bit farther out towards the east coast now and by the way with this storm system comes a lot of cold air this is freezing air diving in right after this storm system setting you up for a cold new year's eve notice what's happening out west we're dry we're getting warm a little bit of snow potentially down here in southern new mexico into texas it's possible i'll take a look at the short ranges once this gets a little bit closer now moving into tuesday and then moving into new year's eve we're pretty cold out east most of you in this area are going to be experiencing below average temperatures out west slightly above average you start to get that ridge building but really across the country we're dry except for some lake effect snow obviously affecting people in the great lakes region and inner new england up here we could have some snow falling as well getting into new year's eve night where's the area that we could see snow well the latest gfs still thinks if you are in this region here it is possible we get some snow falling on new year's eve at night maybe even chicago if this storm moves a little bit more south eau claire madison milwaukee minneapolis some big cities here boston syracuse rochester 
Grand Rapids, Michigan, Erie, Pennsylvania. I'm not going to name all the cities in here, but if you're in this area, chance for some snow falling at midnight on New Year's Eve. Now, as we move into January 1st, some of this snow may want to start moving south into Indiana, into Ohio. We could get periods of heavy snowfall, according to the latest GFS, for potentially a big majority of Ohio, Western PA, maybe even Pittsburgh. And then you could see maybe some flakes flying out here from Philly through New York City into Connecticut, maybe even Boston. We have a lot of cold air and there's still some lingering moisture in this area. So this doesn't look like big accumulation, but someone in here could get one to three inches really quickly as we move into January 1st. And then this is where things get interesting. Getting into January 2nd, some of this moisture begins to move out towards the East Coast. We have a low pressure here that could be begin to slightly deepen. And I'm going to go back to our 06Z run. Our 06Z run has this low pressure a little bit farther up to the north. Doesn't really bring that snow out to the coast, but it does look like taking a look at our 12Z, that low pressure system maybe wants to deepen a little bit farther to the south. So maybe we do get some nice snow in this region here to start off 2026. Something to watch. Now moving into the third and the fourth, we continue to see a lot of cool air pushing into the east. A slight ridge builds back up kind of a zonal flow of warm air across the country as we get into January 3rd, January 4th. Here we go. Maybe another snowstorm for the upper Midwest and Great Lakes region as we get into next weekend. And this snow wants to transition out east. Look at that. Another opportunity for mid-Atlantic and New England snow. Something to watch here. This is where things get interesting, though. And the European and GFS both see something similar happening here as we get into January 6th and January 7th. Very, very amplified trough trying to dig into the east. And could there be the opportunity for some southern snow here? I believe so. We move out through the 7th and 8th. We're cold out east. We're dry. We're warm out west. This system tries to move up the coast. You can see on the GFS. GFS. This is a major nor'easter. We're talking feet of snow potentially up the coast. Again, though, we're far out here. We're 280 plus hours out, but the European sees the same signal. So when you see model consensus, they have some sort of confidence of a strong amplified trough moving in about 250 hours out. Could definitely happen when you have confidence across the globals. Canadian sees something similar as well, beginning to take shape around this time frame. The European, I will say though, throws this low pressure off the coast. So the European AI actually keeps it along the coast. But what I'm trying to point out here is Eastern snow, Southeastern snow, Mid-Atlantic snow, still got opportunities moving into January. And I've talked about this. The beginning of January, I think looks pretty good. I'm concerned once we get into the second and third week of January, we could be cold, but I don't know if we have the moisture. Moving out towards the end of this run, we still have cold air collapsing into the east. We're freezing out east. You can just see this as we get into New Year's Eve. Big shot of cold air out east. These blues and greens, 5 to 15 degrees below average. Once you see these purples, we're talking about 20 to 30 degrees below average. Big shot of cold air for the east. Another big shot of cold air for the east. Another big shot of cold air for the east. We continue to see a lot of below average air wanting to pummel the east. This is exactly what happened in the beginning of December. So this is very interesting. And by the way, we can take a look at the European too. There's that cold air for the east. There it is again. There there it is again, consistently pushing a lot of cold air into the east. And we're getting a lot of warm and cold air interaction here in the beginning of January too, which is why we could see some big storms and maybe some severe weather in here as well. Take a look at the latest GFS ensemble for snow moving forward over the next 10 to 14 days. There are a lot of models here that want to put a snowstorm down here in the south. Now, obviously the confidence for snow is higher when you get into these blues purples and pinks. But this is the first time I've seen this ensemble put some dark grays down here through portions of northern Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, Tennessee, even into portions of Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia. So something to watch here. I've been talking about this as well. A little bit of a polar jet collapse, potentially cold zonal flow as we get towards the end of the first week of January into the second week could give us the opportunity for snow here. The European ensemble sees this as well. It's not as confident, but there's still a signal there. Here's our seven day anomalies from our European weekly getting into January. Notice again, a lot of colder out east. As we get towards mid-January, maybe we warm up a little bit in the center of the country, a little bit of ridging over the plains. But look at this. Second half of January, we are cold from coast to coast. This is a very, very cold signal for January. Taking a look at our stratospheric polar vortex, we still have a lot of heat up here over the Arctic and a slightly stretched polar vortex. We move this forward here, a lot of that heat stays up over the Arctic, but our polar vortex does try to heal itself as we get into early January. But at that point, it's too late. Our winds are moving very slow around the stratospheric polar vortex right now, and that is signaling a lot of cold air into the mid latitudes through portions of January already. And one of the reasons right now the stratospheric polar vortex is having issues getting organized is because of all this ridging up here over Greenland. And this is also what's going to give us the opportunity opportunity for a lot of snowstorms in the beginning of January or a couple of snowstorms in the beginning of January out east, maybe even a little snow in the southeast. But I think the Ohio Valley, Mid-Atlantic, New England, you're going to have some shots here because this is a very negative NAO. And this negative NAO is pushing a lot of higher heights up there towards the Arctic and is displacing this stratospheric polar vortex right here. Take a look at our GFS extended ensemble into January. This right here is our Arctic oscillation. And again, the mean wants to 
stay very negative through January. I'll tell you this, the Euro model wants it to stay more neutral, but neither of them see a very positive AO for the month of January. Getting into our NAO, Again, the euro wants to keep it more neutral to negative, but the GFS is being very aggressive here with cold air and potentially winter storm patterns out east. This is a pretty nice negative NAO through January on the GFS extended ensembles. You can see that mean stays pretty far to the south, and we'll see what happens at the end of January, but this looks very, very cold, very wintry here towards the end of January, at least with the latest GFS extended. As I said, we do have the threat for some severe weather through portions of the Ohio Valley and Midwest. As we get into tomorrow, you can see our categorical risk right here. It does include portions of Arkansas, Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, and Missouri. We do have a 2% tornado risk for tomorrow through portions of eastern Missouri, central to southern Illinois, most of the state of Indiana, and western Kentucky. And then we also have the chance for some strong winds through this region as well. So be sure if you're out here tomorrow, have a way to receive weather alerts, especially in this region. This is our 2% tornado threat. Could go up to a slight. I don't think it will, but it's possible. Indianapolis again, St. Louis. We have some big cities in here, so be sure to have a way to get those alerts and to get notified just in case we get some spin-ups with tomorrow's storms. I appreciate you guys watching this video. If you like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. I upload videos like this consistently, and I try and live stream every day to answer all of your weather-related questions. And if you want to join an awesome weather community, the link to my Discord is in the description of all of my YouTube videos and YouTube lives. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video or the next live stream.